throw up a dusty image on Instagram, but if the caption is fire and it makes the picture make sense, the picture now means something totally different. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Erin, and this is Erin On Demand, a place for entrepreneurs and content creators looking to build your brand, business, and impact. And today, we gotta go. We are talking about some ways you may be using Instagram wrong. Now, when I say wrong, obviously, you can do whatever the heck you want with your Instagram child. I do not care, okay? But these are some things that I have picked up on that I noticed a lot of people are or aren't doing that could be affecting your engagement or, you know, just really aren't that important in the grand scheme of things. The first thing that I think a lot of people do but aren't really necessary are highlight covers. So basically what highlights is, is a place for you to highlight different things um, from your stories. So if you had stories, they expire in 24 hours. So it's a place where you can keep them themed and really share like pertinent information. So if you have a book club, you may have all the past books in one highlight um, on your page. Or for me, I have things about eBrand Club or Frequently Asked Questions. Those are highlights that I find valuable for my audience. Highlight covers have become like this thing where a lot of people were branding their pages to make their and making their highlight covers like super branded so they would have like a color with a cute little icon in them that would be like what you see and all of the highlight covers look the same but maybe with a different icon or whatever y'all know what i'm talking about if you on instagram you know what the heck a highlight cover look like so I don't think that they're necessarily necessary anymore or maybe they've never been necessary. I personally find that a lot of times people have these covers just to make their page look super cute and then I click on them and there's nothing in there. So that has happened many times. And I found that sometimes seeing a little peek into the highlight actually entices people to click on it even more. So if there is a health page and one of their highlights is the supplements they use and I can look and see a little picture of a bottle of a supplement, I may be more enticed to click that than if there's like this really cute curated graphic that they've put there. Like I can actually see that there's something in it. So I think highlight covers are something that are a little, like they're not necessary. And we spend a lot of time making these highlight covers and no one even really pays that much attention to them. So I think one thing you can do is just have the highlights there and choose a cover that kind of where you can see a little blurb of what you're actually sharing in the highlight. It will promote people to actually click on it and watch through your highlight, which at the end of the day is the goal. The next mistake I would say a lot of people are making on Instagram is just a super curated feed. And by this I mean you're making sure everything looks perfect, your feed just looks like a magazine spread. And that is your goal. And I think if that's what you're into and you just enjoy super theming your feed, then go for it. But to me, it doesn't enhance any engagement. This was something that I went through a little phase of like, oh my gosh, my Instagram has to be like, I need this picture placed here and then I need a picture with more white or more dark tones or you know, whatever in these places. And one, that gets exhausting. And two, if you're not seeing any results from that, then you're wasting your time doing it. Instagram is very much pushing more into the direction of people enjoying really authentic content. And it's not to say that the pictures don't look quality and they don't look good, but people care more about what the picture is actually saying and what your caption is saying, what story your overall Instagram profile is telling opposed to the superposed pictures and just this very curated look. So I think one thing that we can kind of take the pressure off of ourselves with is just over curating the content that we post on Instagram. The third thing on Instagram that I think people are using wrong are stories. And I have a whole video about Instagram stories and how to really tell a story with them. I would definitely say that Instagram stories is a huge opportunity for you to grow engagement and build relationships with 
with your following in a very fun way and a lot of people aren't using it for that i see so many people use their stories just to show themselves at events you know they really don't know what to do with it and how to tell a cool story with it i like to use the example of my sister she on her instagram stories she is very great at writing blogging and her business offers writing services for resume writing, um, cover letter writing, all types of written content she is a master at. In her Instagram stories, she does these grammar quizzes every day and she like tests you on which word is the proper word. So like who's with the apostrophe S versus who's W-H-O-S-E or like she'll test you and give you different grammar tips. I literally look forward to her Instagram stories every day because I wanna see those grammar tips and like take the little quizzes. And so it doesn't have to be something that is you talking to the camera and doing all of these super out of the box things on your Instagram stories, but it is a way to build those connections with your audience. And so what Corey does in her stories is when people get the answer wrong, she will also follow up with an explanation as to which answer was grammatically correct and why. And then she asks her audience if they understand it. And if they don't, then she's inboxing them and telling them like breaking it down for them even further. And so that's really building her credibility, building her trust with her audience, all in Instagram stories. And she, she doesn't do this on her feed, but it promotes people when they see her Instagram stories pop up, they want to click on it because they're excited to take the day's grammar quiz and so if you can think of really creative things to do in your stories I do a lot of my top threes for the day my Instagram stories is very similar to my day in the life vlogs but in real time so if you enjoy the day in the life then you will definitely love my Instagram and my stories and so I encourage you to follow me on there use your stories to tell a story that's the whole reason why they're called Instagram stories and if you do have issues with getting more engagement or knowing what to post or getting people excited about your stories, I definitely recommend you check out my video all about Instagram stories. I will link it in the description. The next thing that people get wrong with Instagram are captions. And I think we're in this like long caption wave where people are beginning to use Instagram more as like a micro blog of some sort, which is great, but I don't think your captions have to be long all the time. And this was a strategy that I began implementing last year because I posted a picture with a pretty long caption and it just got so much engagement and it led me to believe that people really are reading on Instagram and they do want to get information from Instagram. I began to do more longer captions, but it doesn't even have to be long as much as it is like it sticks like it needs to be something that really sticks for example Chrissy Teigen her captions are always so bomb they're hilarious and they offer value in a different way than my captions do which are more centered around entrepreneurship or my experiences where hers are like witty and funny and cool just finding your voice on Instagram is really important and really infusing that into your captions but even so if you have a cooking page Page or whatever and you have a picture of a really great smoothie the biggest question people are going to want to know is what did you put in it so begin answering certain questions through Instagram in your captions. Don't be so scared that people won't click on your blog or click on your YouTube channel if you give certain information away exclusively on Instagram. Make sure that you are giving people the value that they're looking for so that they will continue to want to engage with your content. So do not be lazy with your captions. I personally think the caption is equally, if not more important than the actual image because you could throw up a dusty image on Instagram, but if the caption is fire and it makes the picture make sense, then it serves a purpose and the picture now means something totally different. So make sure you keep your captions in mind and don't shortchange. Don't just throw up some Drake lyrics or, you know, uh, an emoji for your caption. Really put some time and some energy into it. The next thing that I think people are doing wrong on Instagram is not having variety. And I see so many people only want one picture on their feed. They're not doing slideshows. They're not, they don't have any videos up. They're not using stories. They don't have any IGTV videos. Um, and you're not really using all of, 
all that the platform has to offer. Upload videos and have fun with it. A lot of Instagram has turned into perfection and now people don't wanna see that as much anymore because that's what our feeds are so crowded with. So honestly, an iPhone picture or a cute selfie or things that aren't as curated actually may start to perform better on Instagram now because we don't see that genuine um, authentic content as much anymore as we do the photo shoots with your popping outfits on the beach and you know all of these super just curated content I feel like I've said curated like a thousand times in this video but that's genuinely what Instagram seems to have turned into and I just want you guys not to make the mistake of feeling like you have to fall into that same box be creative with your Instagram have fun with it and really explore all of the things that it has to offer and the last mistake people are making with Instagram is not going live. Oh my goodness, live on Instagram is like a gem because it alerts everybody that you are on live. I think that that push notification means a lot and I think that's what makes a lot of people nervous about going live is that you know that it's live and you don't wanna make a mistake and it just doesn't feel, I don't know, it feels weird at first. But one thing that I am pushing myself to do more and more this year is go live. It is one of my favorite things to do now because that interaction is like nothing else. You can't get that same direct interaction with posting a picture or posting on Instagram Instagram stories as you do when you go live and so I encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone because going live really can help you to grow a solid audience and I've even seen people have Instagram live talk shows they have all types of series with their lives and just really getting creative with it and thinking of ways to do something that you don't see a lot of people doing like use these spaces as ways to push your brands or business to the next level just go live like just let it all like get loose and j well not like that loosen up and just click live and see what happens and i promise you it's not as bad as you think it is all right you guys i hope this video was helpful for you if it was you are always welcome into my internet home y'all all you have to do to be a part of this family is subscribe or hit the notification bell because i upload every wednesday and most sundays y'all i would love to have you on instagram as well because my instagram family is popping y'all and y'all have really just been so supportive so i love you guys so much in the comments i want to know are you making any of these mistakes with your instagram and if so what what are you going to do to fix that? All right, you guys, I love you and I will see you in the next one. Peace.